<clears throat> how curious to then so let us start with the question number 11 by the way in the last video i did one mistake i later realized in the question number nine i have given the comment section also uh in the theory of relativity one uh the answer was that that i wrote was this but by mistake i take b but the answer was a uh, i mistakenly uh, substituted the value of gamma in um, in a wrong way uh, it was supposed to be this so this factor will go to the numerator not the denominator so i'm sorry for that so the answer given in the mark scheme is a but i have given the answer b in my last video so it's just a mistake you can see this uh, they are using the same method they are using the same answer okay dear students so let us move to question number 11 and now we're going to 11 to 20 again in 20 minutes let's see a gas undergoes one cycle of a cyclic process mm, undergoes one cycle of a cyclic process the net change in internal energy of the gas is always zero in a cycle so whenever there is this cycle kind of thing so when the system is able to reach back to the same position so the internal energy becomes same internal energy is also taken as state function there are two types of function state function and path function path function is work and heat the functions which depend upon path state function is the function which depends only on the state that the system is in so when you have covered one cycle it means that you you have come back to the same state the system has reached the same state it means that the internal energy is not changing so change in internal energy is zero no doubt about it let's move to question number 12. a working refrigerator with the door open is placed in a sealed room the entropy of the room ah <clears throat> the entropy of the room is a um, confusing question see if a uh, refrigerator is uh, there and it is opened there and um, um, so what will happen there the refrigeration will do the cooling part only if uh, the heat is exchanged with the surrounding outside like not in the room so if you are having a isolated room there and you're keeping this refrigerator here let's say which is and there is this heating coil behind the refrigerator so the inside of the refrigerator will be cooling down but the outside room will be getting heated up because um, according to the block diagram the work done is uh, given in and this is the sink temperature that is t2 the heat is being transferred to the higher temperature that is t1 so you can say that this is actually the temperature of the room and t2 is the temperature inside the refrigerator and the work is when you are plugging it in the electricity that is the work so work input is there it has taken some heat from the material that you are keeping in the refrigerator and that heat as well as the electricity is given back to the room as a bigger heat so the room is going to become hotter and the inside of the refrigerator is going to become cooler but the question is that now the door is open so now what will happen so when the door is open at that time you can clearly see that the magnitude of q1 is more than the magnitude of q2 because work input is happening so q1 the heat which is given to the room is more than q2 the heat which is taken by the refrigerator to causing to cause the cooling effect and that is why if the room is isolated and this coil is not ejecting heat to the outside environment but it is ejecting heat inside the room the temperature will be increasing it means that the room is going to increase its temperature so in this case because the temperature is increasing and all the molecules are now having energy and uh, like they're all moving so we can say that the entropy will be increasing so it remains unchanged of course not uh, won't be decreasing because see entropy increase means that the energy is now given to more amount of molecules there are more microstates you can say so every other molecule is now having kinetic energy and running around so we can say entropy will be increasing so that will be my answer okay then moving to the question number 13 um can we apply a formula here let me let me think of it if we can do it with the formula because q is equal to t delta s so change in entropy is q divided by t so we say that uh, 
the temperature here because Q1 is given to the room. So this Q is having a positive value. And of course, T cannot be a very high value. So there will be a change in entropy and that will be positive. So delta S is going to increase. So even by this formula, we can see that yes, when you are giving heat to the system, uh, the entropy will be increasing. So D will be the answer. So that can also be taken as the explanation. Okay, let us go for the question number 13. The black body radiation uh, the curve is, this is the curve at 600 Kelvin. The intensity units are arbitrary. What is the radiation curve? At the temperature of 450 Kelvin, the original curve is shown in the dashed line. This question is from the Wien's displacement law. And uh, this is basically not intensity. This is some other physical quantity, which can be like similar to intensity, but it is something else. That is what books write now. So we know that if the temperature rises comparative to this, the peak will be higher like this. So you can see that this point is also going to shift to the left hand side. If the temperature is falling, it will be going like this. So not only that the intensity will be lesser, but even the peak will be shifting rightwards. So that thing will be happening. So this peak with uh, the graph that is given is at 600 Kelvin and you want to create a graph at 400 Kelvin. So it will be this 450 because temperature is falling. So two points that you have to note. Number one, the intensity is falling. Number two, the frequency or the sorry, the wavelength is also increasing. It is going towards the right hand side. And this is what we are going to see here. So clearly that is happening in a. Yes. That is happening in a. This is the original one and this is the new one. So you can see that intensity is lowering down and the wavelength is increasing. So your answer will be a for the question number 13. Yes. Moving to question number 14, which is from the topic E5. Okay. Star X has a luminosity of L and the apparent brightness B. Star X is at a distance of D from Earth. Star Y has same apparent brightness as X, but is four times more luminous. So the luminosity is 4L. What is the distance? Okay. So the question is like this, this is the Earth and there are two stars here. Number one and number two. So the brightness can be written as luminosity divided by four pi D square. The formula is given in the data booklet, I believe. So this is for the star X because everything is normal. But in the case of Y, the luminosity becomes four times. Okay. Four pi D square and D Y square is what you want to find in the terms of X DX. And the brightness is uh, found to be the same for both of the stars. So we are just going to equate these two equations. You can use any method dividing these two equations, right hand side divided by right hand side, left hand side divided by left hand side, or because it is given that brightness is equal to each other. So we can just put these two expressions in front of each other. So it will be L divided by four pi DX square. It is equal to four L divided by four pi DY square. Four pi, four pi gets canceled out and L getting can can canceled out. DX, uh, DY is the unknown variable. So DY, we are just going to cross multiply now. DY square is equal to four times DX square. You take the square root there and the distance becomes 2D. So B will be the correct answer for the question number 14. Yes, this is how we do this. Easy. The formula is given in the data booklet. You can see that the brightness is given to be equal to each other. You just equate it. I is highly interested in ratios and these kind of questions. So you just, you need to practice like a certain method in which you solve these kind of questions and you can do very well. Yes. Question number 14 is over. Let's move to question number 15. Four identical resistors. Okay. This is one of a very popular IB question, but I'm really very sorry. I have not uploaded this question till date on the YouTube channel. And I know I was not able to do that. I'm sorry for that. And students have been asking this question from since last year. Sorry for it. 
but now I'm going to upload it. Four identical resistors, each of resistors are they are connected as this. What is the effective resistance between P and Q? There are many such questions, and um, even yesterday itself, uh, some students they were asking questions which was similar to this, but not the same. So there is high chance that IB could be asking the similar questions again to you because many students are getting confused here. So all of these resistances are equal resistances, first of all. When you say around PQ, it means that you have to imagine it like this, that there is a battery which is applied across PQ like this. So now I can rearrange this in a very simple manner. See it. This is the battery. And this distance, this is written like this R. This point is P and this is Q. And these three, they are in just one line. Like this. So it becomes a very simple circuit in front of you. And now you can solve it very easily. So one, two, three, these are three R in series and R. So they are in parallel. So I am using a very different formula in parallel. So R equivalent becomes R into three R divided by 3r plus r which becomes 3r squared divided by 4r r and r gets cancelled out so a is the correct answer for this question students might be having doubt here like uh, what is the formula that i'm using here it is the same parallel formula 1 by r equivalent is equal to 1 by r1 plus 1 by r2 but i have moved one step further taken the item there so you can create an easy formula for yourself r1 r2 divided by r1 plus r2 which is very easy to apply like even in this case 3r multiplied by r 3r squared divided by 3r plus r is 4r so we have very quickly found that the answer is 3r by 4 you can save your time with this formula and as per this question is concerned so whenever the two points are given you just imagine there is a battery sitting here like this and try to think from this point of view which resistances are in series you see these three resistances are in series why because the current passing through them is the same the current passing to this could be different because current has divided itself into two parts but once the current is dividing itself into i1 then these all resistances are having i1 current this means that these three are in series and this becomes in parallel and accordingly, you can solve this question. Okay, dear students, so let us quickly move to question number 16. Conductor X is connected. This is again a previous year question already present on the YouTube channel. Conductor X is connected on the cell of EMF E. A power of 16 watt is dissipated in X. The conductor Y is made from the same material with the same diameter, but twice long. Okay, I'm feeling a bit dizzy now. And the cell is 2E. I would be now, uh, my speed will be lesser. <laughs> Both cells have negligible internal resistances. The power is dissipated in Y. How much power is dissipated in Y? Okay, so uh, the power in X can be taken as V squared by R. Like this. And so R should be written as resistivity into L by A. So area will go into the numerator. Why I am doing that? Because they are literally talking about the resistivity, the diameter and the length. So uh, this will be our formula, you can say. And uh, for PY, first of all, the E is becoming double. Area is the same. The resistivity is the same because you're using the same material, but the length is double. That is 2L. So literally it is becoming like four is coming into like four is extra digit which is coming into the numerator and two is the extra which is coming in the denominator otherwise e square a by resistivity into l is the same expression here i can substitute this value here as px so it becomes twice of px isn't it so py becomes twice of px so power in x is given as 16 watts so your answer will be 32 watt in this question, question number 16, and the answer is C. Yes, 32 watt. An electromagnetic wave has a wavelength that is about the size of the diameter of an atom. What region of the electromagnetic spectrum does the wave belong to? 
So electromagnetic wave has a size of the diameter of the atom. Okay, so there is no mathematics uh, involved here. Uh, but usually, I think like the answer should be x-rays. Um, one of the reasons is that in majority of uh, the experiments that we are doing with these radiations, we are using x-rays. Like if you go for the photoelectric emission, uh, it was x-ray which was used. And in many other experiments, we are using x-rays only in the first case. So the reason for that is that the uh, length of the x-ray, wavelength of the x-ray is approximately equal to the diameter. So uh, the atom is in a position to absorb the energy and all that. So the answer will be x-rays. And yes, according to the Mark scheme also, the answer is x-rays only. Uh, there's no mathematics involved in this question anyways. Let's move to the question number 19 now. A particle undergoes simple harmonic motion time period T. At T is equal to zero, the particle has its equilibrium position. What is T when the particle has its greatest distance from the equilibrium position? Uh, the particle undergoes this, T is equal to zero, the particle is at its equilibrium position. What time it is at the greatest distance? So it needs to be at the extreme position. So it will be either T by four, or it will be 3t by 4. So c will be the answer. 3t by 4 will be negative extremity. Like t is equal to 0, it goes to this extreme in t by 4 time. And it goes to the other extreme in 3t three by, three by 4 time. C, again, no problem. So this is done. Let's move to question number 20. Standing waves. Let's see. The diagram 1 shows the variation with position of the displacement of the standing wave. Diagram 2 shows the variation of the position of the displacement of a traveling wave moving to the right along a string. Okay, so these are two different scenarios they're showing. In one, there's a standing wave. In the second one, this is a traveling wave, like the simple wave which is traveling. The point P, Q, R, S are on the string. What is the phase difference between P and Q and the phase difference between R and S? A very good question, I would say. So P and Q um, are the two points in the standing wave. So when there are two points on the standing wave which are lying in the same segment the phase difference is zero so in the case of standing wave it is very simple they are like there are only two cases um, like p and q they belong into the same segment the phase difference will be zero if you were talking about another particle which is r and you talk about let's say p and r the phase difference will be equal to pi they're always out of phase and the, uh, the answer is always either zero or pi it cannot be pi by 2, it cannot be 3 pi by 2, it cannot be anything. There is no other option available. So uh, the phase difference between P and Q, see, they have written in the option, uh, they have written pi by 2 and pi. So we clearly know that this is not the case. It will be either 0 or pi. So either A or C, that's it. Now we are moving for this R and S and it is a traveling wave. Now this is a problem. Uh, the answer is uh, pi by 2. So you think that that will be pi by 2? Let's see. Okay, so whether it will be pi by 2 or not, we have to see that. So there is a formula here, delta phi is equal to 2 pi divided by the wavelength into delta x. I'm going to apply this formula. Uh, time and again, we have discussed this formula on the YouTube channel. I have created videos also like um, in the lecture series. So this formula is very important for us. So 2 pi by lambda. And we have to find the delta x in the terms of lambda. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So these are 8 segments. So the wavelength can be written as 8x or 8 something. And the distance between R and S is 2 something. So this is 2. This is 8. So when we are cutting it, it becomes 4. So 2 and this gets cancelled out. So clearly you are getting the answer of pi by 2 <clears throat> by the formula which is written on your screen. So our answer will be 0 and pi by 2. The answer is C, 0 and pi by 2. So this is how we do this question. And okay, dear students, so the next set that is question number 11 to question number 20 is over. All the best.